Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Dom from Lens Pro to Go and Lens Rentals and welcome back to the channel. In this week's video, I'm going to be doing an ISO performance and exposure recovery test of the Canon C300 Mark III. Now this is obviously the third version of the epic Canon C300 and in this version we got a completely newly designed sensor that has a dual gain output and is capable of 120 frames per second in DCI 4K which is really great. In this week's video however I'm just going to be going through the entire range of ISO values in both C-Log and its RAW recording profile as well as see how well the image from the C300 Mark III recovers when it's over and under exposed. So now with all that out of the way, it's time to take the C300 Mark III into the studio to do these tests. And if you were wondering, all of the specs for the test that I'm about to do are going to be in the description below if you're curious about those. So let's do this thing. Okay, so first I'm going to go through most of the ISO values on this camera in C-Log3. So for this, I'm in the XFAVC recording mode. And I'll start with a log image and wipe over the graded image. And this grade is basically just a 709 with a couple of tweaks. So 160 is the lowest value for this camera outside of RAW, and that obviously looks perfect. 320 is also perfection. At 640 is the very, very introduction of some noise to this image, but it's pretty much negligible. At 800, another tiny, tiny jump in noise, but you honestly have to strain your eyes to even notice it. And 800 is considered to be this camera's base ISO, even though it's not specified. 1250 looks awesome still, but now the image as a whole has a tiny, tiny bit of dance to it. At 2500 is where I consider the noise to be quote unquote noticeable, but honestly at this level it looks pretty pleasing to my eye, almost like the amount of grain that 35mm film has. Okay next at 5000 we see a considerable noise change, but nothing I would call unusable yet. However, some subtle values that give this image good rich contrast are starting to suffer a little bit. And this is probably the last value I would call usable, maybe 6400 in an emergency. All right, jumping up to 8000, that noise is getting a bit out of control, and that contrast problem I mentioned is just going to get worse and worse from now on. 10,000 is getting pretty intense, and here is where you can really notice that green magenta chroma noise starting to pop out. 12,800 is certified bad. The noise is everywhere and you can really notice it start to fall apart where the light from the light bulb falls off under the plant in the bottom right. Twenty thousand, same story, just a lot of noise. Alright, 25,600 is the highest ISO value this camera is capable of and as you can see it doesn't look excellent. The whole image is enveloped in noise, but you should notice that on the C300 Mark II, at this value, we would have been way magenta shifted by now. And I gotta say that even all the way up here, the overall tint isn't affected one bit, so there's an improvement there. All right, now here we are in our raw recording mode with a 12-bit 422 sampling rate. So here we go. The minimum ISO value in RAW is 800, and I'm going to skip through these a little faster than the C-Log test. 800 looks brilliantly clean though, and same with 1600, almost no difference there. 3200 also looks really, really good. There's a tiny jump in noise here, but it does fall off a bit after this value. At 6400, this is the same level of noise that I thought looked pleasing at 2500 in C-Log, so I would totally still use this in most situations, as it's really rich in information still, but has a bit of almost filmic noise to it. Pretty dramatic difference though, however, when we double that to get to 12,800. The noise is super bad and is really getting to those darker colors like these purples and blues in this color chart. At 16,000, we are really starting to lose fidelity here. The contrast within this image is really suffering, as those shadow areas are all taken over by pretty aggressive noise. 20,000 looks pretty brutal as well, with really intense chroma noise happening. And finally, at our max ISO value of 25,600, 
we have super intense distracting noise. And in RAW, we see this magenta shift at this value is definitely happening more than in the XF-AVC mode. All right, so there's your ISO performance of the C300 Mark III in both its C-Log profile and its RAW recording mode. Now we're going to purposefully underexpose and overexpose the image from the C300 Mark III in five stops in each direction and see how well the image is able to recover. And I'm also going to be doing this in the XF-AVC recording mode in C-Log as well as the RAW recording mode, just like I did in the ISO test. And in these tests, you're going to see the original image on the left, the correctly exposed image in the center, and what I was able to recover on the right, which is the same clip as the one that's on the left. Okay, at one stop over, we were able to recover perfectly. At two stops, I'd say we are totally recovered, but at this point on, I have to cool it down a bit color temperature wise and do a slight magenta shift as the stops go up. Three stops also did pretty good in my opinion, but we're right on the edge here. There's not a lot of free information here to work with anymore, and I even had to saturate this image a bit to get it to match. At four stops overexposed, there's clearly lost highlight values in my face, but if you look closely, they aren't technically lost yet, just really, really clamped down. Okay, now at five stops, that's lost information with those huge blotches of white areas on my face and the charts behind me. And the curve I had to put on this image to match the correctly exposed version can't even keep up with that area underneath my hat brim there. You can see it's just completely falling apart. All right, moving on to underexposure. One stop recovered like a dream. However, at two stops, things are already starting to not look so promising. At this point, my shadow slider is already maxed out, and I already had to green shift the tint a bit to match. And as you can see, this correction is starting to reveal considerable noise in the shadow areas, and we're only at two stops under. At three stops, although the values are all more or less matched up, that noise is getting really bad now, and for this one, I had to go into the Creative tab and get some magenta in the highlights and green in the shadows, suggesting that this image is falling apart a bit. Notice that four stops, I was pretty close to getting these images to match up levels-wise, but most of that shadow info has been taken over by noise, and I also had to saturate this a bit to somewhat match the correct exposure. Finally, at five stops, we have heaps of lost shadow information, and what isn't lost has been replaced by very aggressive, mostly magenta chroma noise. Okay, moving on to exposure recovery in RAW. Again, we'll start with overexposure, then underexposure. Okay, one stop is perfect. Two stops also recovered 100%. Three stops also recovered amazingly well, just losing some saturation at this point, which was really easily fixed. Look at the recovery at four stops, pretty insane, but that's what raw video is all about. Absolutely no lost information yet, except for the very upper highlights. And finally, at five stops over, we do have lost information, barely getting clipped on there on my face, but this is absolutely remarkable if you consider what this image used to look like on the left. Okay, and finally, for underexposure in RAW, one stop under recovered fine, but you'll notice that even doing this correction already introduced some noise into this image. Two stops under did great too, but that noise problem is just getting worse and worse now, and the saturation and color is going to start needing tweaking after this one. At three stops, really just all the same problems as before, and it's getting harder and harder for this program to articulate the color in this image. At four stops, that noise is getting pretty bad, but in terms of lost info, we aren't doing terrible, but you could say a lot of that info is being replaced by noise. Finally, at five stops under, it was really hard to match this up properly with so much of that shadow area being gone, and this image is pretty much just starting to break. All right, so that's pretty much gonna do it for this week's video, testing the ISO performance and exposure recovery of the Canon C300 Mark III. So, as always, if you have any questions about the C300 Mark III or any questions about the test that I did in this video, drop a comment in the comment section below and we'll start a discussion. Also, if you happen to like this video, hit that thumbs up button down there to let me know you liked it. And, if you're not already, subscribe to the channel. And if you are subscribed, you can hit that little bell button down there too to be notified whenever we post new content, which 
is every week. So take care, and we'll see you in the next one.